renegade. Um, oh, let's have a look. There's a, um, a walkway on the right hand wing. Some people uh, fit it to the left hand as well, but typically it's on the right hand side. Put your right foot on that, grab hold of the main strut and the back of the uh, seat of the turtle deck, and up you go. Bring your left leg over and put it on the seat. Bring your right, your right leg in. Now, this next bit, the tricky bit, is getting your feet onto the other side of the um, aileron uh, push rods that run out to the wings. You can't be standing on those, you're going to do damage to them, and so uh, you've got to be very careful when you hop in. Um, but that's it, that's as simple as that. Getting into the front cockpit is a totally different story altogether. You've really got to be pretty, pretty agile uh, to be able to get in there. I can get in there, um, yeah, it's not pretty. So, uh, but getting into the back, no problem whatsoever. And hopping out is just exactly the opposite. Just climb up, climb on the seat, don't stand on the, on the um, other on push rods and push yourself up with your um, upper body and there you go, Bob's your uncle. Mind you, I've done it once or twice. Now, yeah, let's... This aeroplane, um, I, think, I think she's in pretty good condition. Um, considering it's more than 30 years old. Uh, it's not a new one. Um, it's kit number 16, this one. Uh, those aileron push rods I was talking about are right down there near the floor. Uh, if you move the control column left and right, you might see them moving. Yeah, you don't want to be, you don't want to be treading on them. They're not a, they're not a, a big control rod. Very, very simple dash on this one. Um, the key, I'll show you the key. Um, that those of you that are old enough probably heard of Yuri Geller. Yuri Geller didn't bend this key. I did when I hopped out of the aeroplane one day and uh, hit it with my knee. So after that, uh, there's a hook on the cabane here and uh, it, the keys just get hung on the hook before I start to hop out. Uh, we've got a low oil level uh, indicator, which uh, this is a two-stroke engine, so it has a little oil tank, and that just tells you when you're running low on oil. Uh, coolant temperature, uh, and this has a, a landing light, uh, uh, not a um, uh, an LED or anything. It's a, an incandescent um, landing light. And the reason for that is to put load onto the alternator because the charging circuit's not all that stable if it doesn't have load on it. And the thing that suffers is this little puppy down there that costs a lot of money and I'm on my third one or, uh, until I fitted the, um, uh, the uh, landing line. Um, we've got an airspeed indicator, um, the master switch and alt altimeter. The front cockpit's even more sparse. Uh, it has a Hobbs meter on the right, an airspeed indicator, which I normally use because I can see it uh, in focus because I'm not a young person and I have a bit of trouble focusing uh, at something that's really close to my face. But that one I can see quite plainly. The compass as usual uh, and uh, a tiny tack. I've got a tiny tack in the front and a tiny tack in the back. I didn't mention that. Uh, they work. They work pretty, pretty neatly. They agree with one another. Uh, so no, they're they're fine. Um, oh, I use a cushion. Uh, I'm about five foot seven, uh, um, or 172 centimeters, something like that, uh, and. Um, I need this booster cushion because I'm just a little bit short on one end. So that sits in there and away you go. 
uh, controls over here. The rear, the rear, um, the rear one, this one, is for um, elevator trim, and uh, I'll show you that in a minute. The little one in the middle is for choke, and the throttle at the front. There's no mixture. The mixture's done uh, with the, the constant velocity carburetors, uh, and it looks after itself. I've had the aeroplane to. Uh, well, yesterday I was at 7,000 feet, but I've had it up to 8,500, which is completely unnecessary because Australia's as flat as a tack, and you know you can fly anywhere at like 1,500 feet and not hit anything. So, yeah, that was just for my own entertainment. Now let's have a look at that at that trim tab I was talking about. This is the elevator trim here. Um, that lever in the cockpit operates this. Uh, some of the propaganda uh, from Murphy says, oh, some people don't even bother fitting that trim tab because the aeroplane flies so well. Well, no, it doesn't. And anybody who's a, you know, who's a pilot will know that uh, an, a an aeroplane that's not in trim is you know, quite a pain to fly. It's not a, it's not, um, it's not a nice thing at all. And it's no, not necessary. That uh, tab's really quite easy to fit. Matter of fact, here's one I prepared earlier. Uh, we have uh, this, uh, this is my next uh, Murphy that I'm building, or next Renegade that I'm building. It has uh, the trim tab already done, the elevator's done, horizontal and vertical stabilizers, and um, the rudder. No worries, that's all done. At the moment, I'm installing these stringers that they're pretty much just temporary at the moment. Uh, so, uh, we're also discussing, uh, you know, the the, um, the height of the pilot um, and versus, I guess, the C or G. Um, you know, I'm on the. Uh, um, about 90 kilos, and I've got no problems with CG on on the on this aeroplane at all. This one might be a different story. We haven't established the CG yet. It will have a radial engine at the front, and that's quite a heavy thing. So um, there's a few modifications that are required for that, like heavier undercarriage. This undercarriage is heavier than uh, than the standard uh, Renegade one, uh, and the firewall has been moved um, aft. Uh, by about six inches. Well, I don't know. And um, yeah, this one is it's slightly different. It's a later model. Like I said, the other one is at least 30 years old. That aeroplane is at least 30 years old. This one's uh, probably uh, about 12 or 15 years, I guess, since this was shipped. Um, the uh, aileron, aileron control rods come out uh, here and, and, and go out each side of the aeroplane. So again, you're going to have to step over those to hop in. Uh, you do have a little bit of room to move uh, with the seat. I can move aft. I can't really move forward very much or we will run into a problem with the, um, the aileron push rods having somewhere to, to go. Oh, so what do you do then if you're a short pilot? Well, the only option you've got left then is to move the rudder pedals, the aft rudder pedals, uh, is to move them um, a little bit further aft. Uh, ideally, ideally these, these uh, pedals um, should probably, for me, should be on, on this uh, carry-through. Um, but if I do that, uh, a couple of things. One, they're not going to be at the right height, and I'm going to have um, a problem with the brake master cylinders, locating them as well, most likely. I could have located it um, aft of that carry through piece, uh, but um, then I would have had, I would have, again, I would have had problems with the brake master cylinder. If I do need to move them, I probably still can. I'll just have to re-swage this cable and either remake this front cable uh, or um, make a, a link. Make, for instance, make 
remake this link but make it longer or make another link that attaches to that one. So I've got options. Um, what else have we got? That's probably, they're probably the high points. Um, yeah, it's, uh, oh, I know, don't, um, don't, don't fall for the propaganda that there's, I think, I think they state there's 600 hours to build this aeroplane. Yeah, right, good luck with that. I'd like to see, I'd like to see you do it in 600 hours. Um, there's probably considerable more hours than that. But worth every minute. It's uh, well worth it. The aeroplane's fantastic. Uh, this one is anyway, and I've got another one as well. But um, the other one has a, a 912 uh, Rotax. This one's got a 582 Rotax. Uh, the performance is really, you know, <laughs> it's almost double the horsepower in the other one, and it really doesn't perform any better than this one. It really doesn't. If you start pushing it and making it climb, uh, at a higher rate, which it will climb higher than this one of course, it just, uh, the engine gets hot and uh, that's about all it does, makes a bit more noise, uses about the same amount of fuel because two strokes are fairly thirsty critters, but um, yeah, absolutely love this propeller, it's, um, it's really good, this is, the, this is my third propeller, the first one, the first one couldn't absorb the horsepower, um, the, the mighty, the mighty 65 horses. Um, so uh, I bought another one, another fixed pitch propeller, and uh, not only could it not absorb the horsepower and overspeed the engine, but it also vibrated. So you beauty. Uh, so then I ordered this propeller, and it has been fabulous. So yeah, it's uh, if you get a ground adjustable, that's that's. A good way to go. I know it doesn't look right, look as nice as a uh, as a fixed pitch wooden one, but hey, it works better. It it gave me about five knots on on top of the previous one I had, and um, and it's it's quite smooth and it's adjustable. Um, that's about it. If you've got any uh, any other sort of questions, when you see um, you see me fly. Um, or any of the videos that I've posted, um, you'll see me wearing wearing this thing. Um, now it's not it's not so I don't catch COVID when I'm flying. It's so that this uh, exhalation valve we took uh, took it out of this um, side here, and uh, I put the microphone uh, from my headset uh, into that hole and. Um, and that blankets a fair bit of uh, uh, background noise when I'm transmitting. So yeah, it works well. Works pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I think those things, uh, they're about $5 or something. They're not very dear. I think bicycle riders use them so they're not uh, sucking in diesel fumes when they're riding on the highway. Um, now there's uh, about the only problem with two-stroke, you get oil all over the... Uh, all over the aeroplane, the exhaust is just here. So, uh, yeah, but hey, that's a small price to pay. It's, um, it's good stuff. Okay, take care. See you next time.